Hi, I'm Bill Ryden from Penn State Pesticide Education Program, and welcome today to the Penn State Landscape Management Research Center. We're going to take a look at monitoring for turf insects, and I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Ben McGraw, our turf grass entomologist. Thanks, Bill. What I'd like to do here today is take you around and show you some of our common turf grass insect pests and really the best methods for monitoring for each species or a complex of species. Hopefully by doing so, uh, we can fine tune our management plans on golf courses, athletic fields, or home lawns. In doing so, uh, reducing our labor, reducing uh, our chemical inputs, and really maximizing our profits. One of the easiest and most cost-effective sampling techniques is visual monitoring. And what I mean by visual monitoring is going out onto the turf uh, environment and looking around and seeing if we can actually see the insect pest itself or maybe some telltale signs that the insect has left. Now I've started with the turf grass ant, which is a common ant in open fields and temperate parts of North America. It's become an increasing problem on golf courses in areas where we have very close cut turf. This ant will cause some volcano shaped mounding as it displaces the soil as it tunnels and it becomes very apparent. However, we're here in the middle of the summer and mounding is everywhere. Our control is going to be less effective at this time. What we need to do is be vigilant and know when the insect is going to appear early in the year and know what to look for as far as its mounding in order to time our controls appropriately and get the best uh, efficacy that we can. One of the great things about the visual sampling technique with the turf grass ant, unlike many other insect uh, problems that we have in turf grass, is that their visual telltale sign is going to be in a very concentrated area, especially in spring as the colony starts to develop. What we're going to be looking for are what I call satellite mounds or secondary mounding, and that's what is a very apparent on close cut turf like tee boxes, collars, and greens. So what we would want to look for is very early in spring these mounds appear on the short turf. Now there's a reason why these mounds appear on the short turf. A turf grass ant colony is founded by a single queen. And that's very important as far as control, but it's also very important to understand as far as where mounding is going to appear. Now the queen is going to be located in a nest off of the close cut turf. So she's going to be in this rough height turf here. Now we're on a research plot that is being mowed at green's height, what we typically find on a golf course. And next to the green, we have this rough height or uh, two to three inch height of turf grass here where the queen is going to be located in her colony. Now she's going to produce mostly female workers throughout the year. And in the springtime, the colony is just starting to take off. Those workers are going to go out and they're going to forage into the area of short turf around us. So these workers will dig through this very sandy soil and these problems are, are greatest in sandy soils. She's going to send her workers out to forage for insect pests and other insects that might have been damaged on the green surface. And in doing so, they produce these satellite mounds here. Now what you'll see on most uh, golf course greens or tee boxes is that the majority of the mounds, 90% or even more, are going to be located within the first six to ten feet of the rough short grass border. And that's exactly what we see here with this mid-season mounding occurring. We have a couple of monitoring techniques that take advantage of how the insect moves around uh, to capture them and then be able to track their abundance over time to make uh, pest management decisions. Walking insects such as the annual bluegrass weevil and bill bugs are easily captured in what we call a pitfall trap. So the most basic design of a pitfall trap could be something as simple as a plastic cup that is placed flushed with the soil surface and having a little bit of fluid in the bottom of it, uh, antifreeze or soapy water to contain the insect once it falls into it. Now it is important to keep rainwater out of these traps so that they don't flood and insects escape before they can be accounted for. Another type of trap or a modification on the pitfall trap is the linear pitfall trap. And this actually is just a PVC tube with a slit in the top that will lead to that same construction of the pitfall trap. So we like to use these plastic soda bottles. You can cut a hole in the side and fit the tube right into it. And what that allows us to do is trap insects over a much greater area. 
So as the insect, like the annual bluegrass weevil, moves from its overwintering site onto golf course fairways, we can place these traps around the golf course, see the insects that fall in the trap, and hopefully move their way into the containment fluid. We can come over time and see how many have emerged over several weeks to make our management decisions. So the trap is rather simple, just a, a certain length of PVC pipe. We have a slit or a channel cut in the top of it. And when we place it in the ground, we're gonna want it to be flush with the soil surface so that the insect is walking along and then the ground falls away. Now, I also like to have the trap angled slightly down so that once the insect falls into the trap, it's gonna to wanna to walk to the lowest point. And so by angling it down slightly, you're moving the insects into the fluid that much faster. Now that bottle will be capped to keep the rainwater out. And what we can do is come over time and either empty the trap or look into the trap to check on the number of adults that have landed in there. And you might want to use a much larger bottle, like a two liter soda bottle to catch uh, more insects and be able to remove the trap easily. One of the most all around sampling techniques is soil sampling. Since many of our turf grass insect pests dwell in the soil, uh, an invasive technique such as soil sampling is going to be accurate at capturing many stages. We have a couple of different tools that we use for soil sampling. Basically the difference is the action of how it pulls the core, but also the core diameter. So a smaller plugger like this, which we call the zoysia grass plugger, which is used in zoysia grass establishment, is great for a small insect like the annual bluegrass weevil, looking for its larvae in the soil. Other insects such as white grubs, we commonly use a golf course cup cutter, a four inch cup cutter, uh, to find the soil dwelling stages uh, of white grubs, which are their larval stages. So I'm briefly gonna demonstrate how this would work with the golf course cup cutter. Basically what we are gonna be looking for is a core maybe three inches down into the soil. We just need to be where the larvae are at the moment. So we dig in to the turf and we pull out a rather shallow core. And what this will do is deliver a core like this that we now will break into quarters and look for the stages. Now with white grubs, it's going to be readily apparent whether there's a white grub larva in this it's feeding on the roots. It will be rather apparent when we open it up, it will probably pop out uh, in quarters. When we're all done with the sample, even though this is rather invasive, rather destructive, we take those quarters, we can put them right back into the soil, step down on it, provide a little bit of water, uh, in an extreme case, maybe a little bit of fertilizer, it's going to grow just fine. So we can sample, break it apart, seems very destructive and invasive, but in fact we can actually have turf grow back. Now this might not be something that you want to do on close cut turf, but on lawn height, athletic field height, uh, and even rough height turf will be just fine. The next tactic that I'm going to show you is vacuum monitoring. So vacuum monitoring is very popular in agricultural crops. We've modified uh, basically a leaf blower We've reversed it to use as a vacuum to suck up any insects that might be roaming on the surface of the turf. So this is gonna be very effective for insects that walk and insects that are found on short mown turf. So the pests like the annual bluegrass weevil or bill bugs, this technique can be very, very effective. Now, as I mentioned, we use a leaf blower. We're using it in reverse, so it works in the vacuuming sense. And we're gonna just put a catch or a basket inside the nozzle of the leaf blower. We wanna count the insects. We don't want them to shoot out or go through the engine. And for our purposes in research, we like to capture them alive. So the nozzle, we basically put the basket with the mesh netting inside, and it just allows the insect to be captured before it enters the engine. Now what we've done is, you know, we've created our own little baskets, basically two deli cups that you could find at a grocery store. Uh, we've sandwiched them, uh, we've sandwiched a mesh netting in between the two baskets and then duct taped it so that it will stay firm when the vacuum is working. And now what we're going to do is once we start up the engine and we get some suction going, that basket is going to stay in place and we are just going to work the vacuum with a tight suction against the turf and we're just gonna move that back and forth. 
So let's do a little demonstration. So with the engine on, I remove the basket from the nozzle of the vacuum so that we didn't lose any of the contents. And then I like to kind of pinch off the netting like that so that nothing escapes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this to a tray so that I can count the number of individuals, in this case, annual bluegrass weevil adults that we captured on the turf. So I basically just invert the bag and kind of work the contents out and then also look for any insects that might be hanging on to the net. I might shake out the debris a little bit. In this case, uh, we don't have a whole lot of debris, but you can see all the different adults that we've captured. Many of our turf insect pests have cryptic or hidden stages. Therefore, we need a means to extract them out of their hiding places. Most of our subterranean uh, pests can be extracted through what we call a disclosing solution. It's basically soapy water solution is another term for it. And by applying one to two ounces of a dish detergent, like a lemon joy, into one to two gallons of water, we can apply that over the turf surface and irritate out any unseen insects that are hiding below. We don't want the insect to advance until the damaging stages uh, and have turf loss before we know that they're there. So it's very important to catch many of these insects early into their invasion in the turf. This technique works very well for some of our beetles, like our weevil pests, our bill bugs, our annual bluegrass weevil, as well as our caterpillar pests, our lepidopteran pests, like black cutworm or fall armyworm. Other insects are able to uh, maintain their hiding places and are not irritated easily, such as the European crane, crane fly. What I'm gonna show you here today is black cutworm. Now the black cutworm is a caterpillar and it lives uh, basically in a burrow uh, underneath the ground in close cut bent grass areas like teas and greens. And by applying a, a disclosing solution over about um, a three by three foot area, and I will show you on a much smaller area, uh, we can hopefully irritate out any larvae. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I've got my pre-made soap solution here. Again, that's about one to two ounces of uh, dish detergent in one gallon of water. And I'm just gonna apply it evenly over the turf. I have seen some burrows or some hiding places that potentially could be black cutworm. And basically what we're doing is, and you can see readily, almost immediately, we can see numerous amounts of larvae coming to the soil surface. This uh, is irritating them. You can see that they don't like it very much and they've popped right out of uh, their burrow. So the water filled up that burrow and probably helped them come out quite a bit. And that soap really irritates their cuticle. They don't like it very much and they come up to the soil surface. Now, one thing that I will say about this technique, it, it might take longer for certain insects. Annual bluegrass weevil, we typically wait about 10 to 15 minutes to get a true estimation of all of the adults that might be uh, in, the, in the turf. Uh, other things like caterpillars come up readily. But one thing that we wanna do is after we're done sampling the area is we wanna apply some irrigation on this, some, some, just some water alone to get some of uh, the soap off of the canopy. On a hot day like today, if we leave the soap on the surface, we might actually get some scalding of the turf. Sometimes it makes sense to combine some of our techniques together. We've already demonstrated soil sampling. Soil sampling combining with an irritant like a salt or a saline extraction technique is very effective for getting a couple of different kinds of insects out of the soil. Not only will it get insects that are residing in the thatch or in the foliage that just happen to be in the sample when we take it out, it's also very effective for extracting stages out of the plant. So insects that bore into the plant, feed internally within the plant, things like bill bugs and annual bluegrass weevil, are easily extracted in a saline solution. 
So I've taken my soil sample with my cup cutter, which delivers a core about one-tenth of a square foot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up much like how we looked at soil sampling before. The only addition that I am going to do is that we're going to place that core into a saturated saline solution. So we have some agricultural salt or mineral salt that you can buy at any ag feed store. And basically the amount really doesn't matter, but I'm going to add it into a cup until it's really saturated. So the solution can no longer accept any more salt. Now what I can do is I can take my core, break it up, and I really like to break it up again into fourths or maybe even eighths. And we're gonna place that material into the solution. And if we're going for insects that are residing within the turf plant, then we're gonna to have to wait a little while for them to be extracted out of that solution. So we might wait up to an hour if we're talking about annual bluegrass weevil larvae. If we're talking about an insect uh, that's in the adult stage, like a billbug or a weevil larva, they might readily pop out. So typically what we do is we place the material into the saturated saline solution, we stir it up to get uniform uh, breaking up of the sample, and then we have to wait and monitor these after somewhat of an hour's worth of time. Already what we can see is some adult beetles are coming to the soil, uh, to the surface of the solution. Insects have a variety of means of communicating with one another, and one of the more studied areas of communication amongst insects is through the use of chemical signals. Pheromones, uh, like trail marking pheromones or sex pheromones for males to communicate with females, have been employed in a variety of traps. In turfgrass insect management, we have a couple of pheromone traps that we can use to monitor insects. This is the Japanese beetle trap, it's probably one of the most common uh, pheromone traps that we do use. We do have uh, pheromone traps for uh, other insects like oriental beetle as well as black cutworm. But this is probably the most common one, the one that many are familiar with. It's a two-part trap, one using a floral lure, so a food source uh, for the insect, as well as uh, a sex pheromone, a, a scent that is produced by the female. So by having both lures, we're able to trap males and females uh, of Japanese beetles. So a trap like this is employed when it has the food lure and the sex lure on it, and it's hung from a metal pole such as this. Uh, and if you look at the trap, what we can see is that it's basically a, a funnel or almost like a lobster trap, leading the insects to first migrate towards the scent, get into the funnel, and then they are trapped in the lower portion of uh, the trap here, which unscrews. Now, some people have often thought that they could use this for a means of removing beetles, and there are some studies uh, showing that it actually encourages more beetles to show up. So we solely use this as a monitoring technique, not as a means of controlling the insect. But if I open up the bottom of the trap, I think you'll see why some people uh, have seen that they might or cause them to think that they might get some good control is that we get quite a few beetles in the trap. So a very effective trap, it's using a, a floral lure and a sex pheromone to draw these insects in. So as we've seen with several of our sampling techniques, they either exploit where the insect lives or how the insect behaves to monitor its activity. This is a light trap and what we're trying to do is exploit insects that fly at night. So many of our turf insect pests will have an adult form that is nocturnal and this light trap uh, draws them in with this bulb here and then uh, the insect hits one of these panes and is directed into the bucket. Now the bucket, I, I typically like to put some fluid in the bottom of the bucket, some soapy water to mobilize the insect. Uh, right now this bucket is dry and it is captured uh, several different kinds of insects that fly at night. Many of our white grubs uh, have nocturnal adult forms. They're all scarab beetles and we can monitor their activity. So right now we have some Japanese beetles and some northern mass chafers in here as well as several moths that will lay eggs in the turf which become our caterpillar pests. So both those types of insects that we've captured in here we are using this device as our preventive measure 
uh, helping us determine whether that insect is in the area prior to egg laying, prior to that damaging larval stage. Something that's gaining in popularity in turf grass insect management is the use of growing degree days or weather monitoring to time our applications or to time the activity of certain insect pests. Here we have our watchdog weather station, very simple on-site monitoring system that allows us to track uh, things like temperature or soil temperature, air temperature, uh, light intensity. And depending on what we're interested in tracking as far as variables that are important in the insect's development, we're able to better time our applications or know when to actively look for these insects. Now insects are cold-blooded organisms, so their development is acutely tied to temperature. And by the use of growing degree days, which are accumulations of temperatures throughout the year, we can time some of these phenological events. Now, other things a little less technologically advanced is the use of plant indicators. Things like rhododendron bloom or forsythia bloom are key uh, blooming indicators or they're anecdotal uh, indicators of insect presence in certain areas. Those two indicators that I just mentioned are very important for annual bluegrass weevil application timings as they have been correlated to big phenological events in their development. So in order to track insects development and correlate that with temperature accumulations, we use what is called a growing degree day. A growing degree day is basically just using a couple of variables that, uh, that the weather station provides, a maximum temperature, a minimum temperature, uh, to get us an average temperature for the day. And what we have to do is we have to take that value and subtract it from a base or a threshold temperature for that insect's development or movement. So basically taking our daily average temperature, we subtract that from the base, and in many turf grass insects pests, we start recording the heat accumulations on March 1st using a base of 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So anything, uh, any day that has an average temperature over 50 is going to have a positive growing degree day accumulation. Now there are no negative growing degree day accumulations, so we only advance forward. And by monitoring our weather on site and correlating that to insect activity on our site, we we're able to go forward throughout the years and really fine tune when these events are going to happen. So we've tried to provide you with the, an overview of some of the most common sampling techniques for turf insect pests. We might even want to use multiple tactics when we're sampling for just one pest species. By combining efforts, we can get a much more accurate representation of the actual population. So this brings into question, what do we do with all this information that we've collected? The idea of the threshold is that a certain density or a certain number of individuals within a population might cause turf damage. Now this is a very subjective thing right now in many turf grass pests that we have. So with certain insects like white grubs, we traditionally say about 10 larvae per square foot might cause damage. Now you might need to take multiple samples to get a real accurate estimation of, of how many white grub larvae you have in a field. So as far as thresholds go, with some insects we have very defined thresholds, others not so well. Further complicating the issue is the health of the turf grass stand. If we promote healthy, dense turf grass, they're with, able to withstand quite a bit of insect damage before we see visible loss. Stress turf, low heights of cut, like putting greens, might be able to withstand far fewer insects before we see damage. So it is important to sample for the insect. It's definitely important for accurate diagnosis and picking the right controls. But as far as whether to take control, that's another uh, matter entirely. And really what that involves is intensive sampling and understanding the risk that you have on your turf site. Thanks for coming out and joining us today. Hopefully you learned something about turf grass insects and how to monitor for them to make your control better and also less expensive. If you have questions or need more information, please contact us at the websites listed on the screen. Thank you and have a great day.